<laughs> what is compromise? <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Okay, let's go. We're keeping it twice as long. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I think we should do it. No, we keep doing it. Oh, yeah? Longer? Really? Wanna try it? We're the au pairs. I hope that people can listen to this album and feel all the feels. That's kind of where the songs go. They're about life and death, and they're about love and loss, but they're about just having fun with each other, and I hope that people can feel that and connect with it. Listen to it while they're doing the dishes, back in the car, at the gym. <laughs> there's something about three-part harmony and there's something about the way we do three-part harmony that makes me like it's why I play in this band mm -hmm. and it's why I love this music so much it hits me in a certain way that makes me feel so relaxed and at peace doesn't matter how loud you say what is We had been playing the music that you're going to hear on the album live for quite some time and getting it really strong and that was a huge part of us wanting to make this. When it came time to record and we were all ready, we, we had each written at least one new song that mm. we were so excited about and that kind of replaced some old songs. Sometimes they come a bit more complete, sometimes they're very bare bones, mm -hmm. but I think all of us sort of have that in mind now when we're even writing songs like oh, I can't wait to bring this to the group because I yeah. know that it's going to add so much. I was writing Heading Home a, a couple years ago. I had a, uh, hurry up and don't be late. I ain't the kind of girl that you want to make wait. Na, 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 na. Leave me alone because if you're going to give me waiting, then I'm heading home. And Jill was over and I was like, what comes now? And she's like, oh, don't keep. And I just, that was, that's why it's like that. Because you were there and we were dancing around my kitchen and it was just ridiculousness. You don't really have a real voice until you have an album out. And we always kind of knew that. It all happened at a really natural time. We had been playing for three years and writing a bunch of music that wasn't recorded. Well, I don't think I'll ever remember a moment in my life when I felt this excitement from when we got the grant. You said we got the grant, you took a picture of it and sent it to us. And then I was in the subway just like, <laughs> just like breathing like really heavily and smiling. And people were just like, She's gonna she's kill everyone okay. here. Yeah. Like, she's, she's not okay. <laughs> we wanted to make this full length album. We knew it was time. We were gonna record it probably at our engineer's cottage, or we were gonna get a grant from Ontario Arts Council. We've got Tim O'Reilly on bass, uh, Rob McLaren on guitar and banjo, and Nathan Smith on fiddle, along with so many other amazing musicians. The two main people were Andrew Mullen, our recording and mixing engineer, and Peter Cook, our producer. Once we received the grant, it was them that we talked to and said, okay, we're gonna go for it. Let's figure out how we can do this. Peter Cook is like, oh my God. <laughs> I know, we just kind of, oh. He was always someone that we respected so much. He told us how much he liked our music and always had such amazing feedback for us. He was the one that told us to put the breath in Need to Breathe. It was like, of course, that's just the way the song was always supposed to be. When it comes to communicating within that sonic world, for him to respond in such a visceral way that we can see, like, is this good? And he's crying, so I'm like, it's good, I guess. It's good, yeah. yeah. Or it's really bad. Or it's yeah. really, yeah, yeah. Mullen was one of those people who gave us so much insight and had such a good idea of what we wanted that we, yeah. we totally trusted him. Mm -hmm. It's yes. amazing to meet people who just have a great sense of humor, know when to focus, and know so much about their craft. One day uh, was written about our friend Su Yun, who we went to school with, um, and he, he passed away when he was too young. I know whenever we sing the song, it feels very, very close to home, and I remember he had just passed away and I was sitting at home and it was in the winter time, it was near Christmas. It was really heavy and it was really weighing on me and I think 
writing that song about him, about life in all phases, having him just leaving us so recently, I needed to communicate, you know, those feelings of grief and and uh, and remembrance of somebody super special, but also remembering how short life is and how thankful, you know, we are to have known Suyan and each other and just, you know, we're alive and well, and we really are. changing of a season and also like a bit of a quarter-life crisis and when you're starting to rethink things that have been kind of just familiar and comfortable in your life especially like the idea of a winter or like a long relationship where you kind of become dormant and you settle in and you hibernate a little bit and then something happens who knows what it is but maybe it's the spring and like there's an awakening and it kind of triggers that perspective and like digging in a little bit more and really sinking your teeth into what your life is and what you want it to be. We had a couple 13 hour days. We um, recorded 13 songs in two days. That in itself, it was almost a blur. It was so exciting and mm -hmm. I feel like we were ready to go for 24 hours or something. We were just so <laughs> exhilarated. We've spent so much time on it and I know that this is a lifelong partnership yeah. with these musicians and our production team. We've grown something through making Like Those Nights that's just going to continue into everything we make. Like those nights we used to know I'm alright, I'll let you go After 